Hi guys, I just wanted to share this really cute craft die that I got. It's from Studio Calico and Murray, I think that's how you pronounce your name. That's how I've been pronouncing it in my head for the past couple of years anyway, so I hope it's right. Um, her YouTube num name is MNC512 and she does a whole lot of really cute work. She does beautiful beautiful. I love her mini books and her project life and I love everything that she does. So um, she noticed that I loved bow ties a lot <laughs> and so she offered to send me this die with her when she ordered some stuff from Studio Calico not too long ago. So it just came in the mail the other day and I'm going to play with it right now and I'll come back and let you guys know. A couple of people on Facebook asked me about this die and so it's if you're looking for it I don't know if you can still get it at Studio Calico um, because sometimes they don't keep their stuff in stock for very long but it's called a craft die and then colon bow I think is what it's is what it's called but you can get similar dies from other manufacturers MFT makes one I'm pretty sure and um, either Maggie Holmes or Dear Lizzie makes one too and it's an American crafts from one of their recent collections anyways so um, I will be be back and show you what I make. So before I get started I just wanted to point out that when you take the plastic off of this die and then you go to use it, it, um, it, it all three pieces are connected. It will work if you just leave all three pieces connected and I am thinking that that's actually what I'm going to do so I don't have to worry about losing this smaller piece anywhere. Um, you can just kind of move them back and forth and back and forth and it will come off and the other thing that you can do is use oh, I don't have my tool here I have like little wire cutters that I keep in my craft room but they're upstairs because I'm working on my Christmas village right now so I'm going to go ahead and leave them together but you can feel free to separate them if you want and the more I use them they'll probably come apart because I've done that before and found that they do kind of loosen up as you use them but Anyways, thought I'd mention that. So I've been making bows, so I wanted to show you guys how it works because I did get a couple of questions as I mentioned on Facebook. So as I mentioned, I'm just keeping my dies together so I don't have to worry about losing that middle little tiny piece. So I'm just using scrap paper here today because I'm just playing around with it to find out how it works so that when I want to make bows for a layout, I can custom make them based on what I need. For my layout. So I'm just going to roll this through my big shot and take it out and you get these three little pieces. And the die cut pieces, if you're wondering, you can see by the size of my hand that they're fairly small. The the longer piece that loops around to make the bows is three, it's three inches long and then the tail is two inches long and this little strip here is actually longer than it needs to be unless if I'm making it wrong but the way that I make them it's longer than it needs to be uh, so I just trim it off and the final product looks like I'm just gonna put them all I made a whole bunch so the final product looks like uh, that one doesn't have tails looks like that now this one I made with liquid glue and so you'll see that there are some if you look really closely you can see some glue blobs on it and I am not I don't have the dexterity to be able to use liquid glue for this kind of a project because it's like it just gets all over the place. And the kind of glue that sticks fast, which is Tombow Mono and I guess Glossy Accents would do the trick too, but it would make a glossy um, mess if you were to get it in the wrong place. Anyways, that ki those kinds of glue stick so much to your hands that it's just it's not a pleasant experience at all. So. Um, you can try using glue, liquid glue. I used Tombow Mono and it's it held fine, but I found it quite messy. So all of the other ones I have used glue dots with, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is what it looks like without the tails, using just a piece of pattern paper. 
and this is what it looks like cut out of POW glitter paper from America Crafts. It's awesome. I think it's my favorite. It really holds its shape because that, that paper is plasticized. And if you were worried about this flattening in your project, you could stick little pop dots in the little holes there just to hold its shape a little bit. But it's, you know, if, if you make it out of high quality pattern paper, it's going to hold its shape fairly well. This one I cut out of a piece of vellum, but it was thick vellum, so it wasn't, it's not all that see-through. It was just in my stash, I don't know where it came from. But that's what that one looks like. And I, instead of using the strip that, the center strip that the die comes with, I just used a piece of skinny ribbon on this one. And the ribbon I used is from Stampin' Up! It looks like this. I think it's one eighth of an inch. And then this one I cut out of my daughter's old skirt that I have on hand here that I just had. I just went to my, I got so excited after making some, uh, some paper ones, I just ran over to my fabric area and grabbed some, some fabric. So this is made out of just some cotton. And I really like the texture on the edges of it. And then for this one, I used this kind of ribbon. Oops. I don't know who makes this ribbon. I bought it from an, e from an Etsy vendor. And I've been asked who, and I can't find them anymore. I think their store is gone. Um, but it's one eighth inch ribbon. And then this one I cut out of felt. And felt is a little bit more flexible than paper so you can actually pull down the strings a little bit on the felt one and make it a slightly different shape. You could pull it down all the way or you could even probably cut them and have the the little dangly things kind of like hanging out underneath of it instead of going beside it. So those are the ones that I've made so far. And I'm just going to show you how. I'm going to show you using paper because it's easier than the other materials. The process is the same for the other materials. So what you need is some glue dots, which I'm not a fan of glue dots, so I'm happy to have a use for them. These are, I have two different kinds of glue dots, and one is more stretchy than the other kind. Uh, so I like to use the stretchy kind because they're thinner. Um, you see how these, I don't even know, they're so thin that I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there's the glue dot right by my fingernail there. And see how it's, it's very, very thin. It's not much thinner than the paper. Um, I mean, it's not much thicker than the paper. And then these glue dots, you can see them, they kind of stand out off of the roll. A little bit so these ones are thicker and they're not quite as stretchy like they're they're a harder it's almost like a little piece of sticky plastic see it on my thumb there and it kind of holds its shape and it could be that these are just old and they used to be stretchier than they are right now but these ones are not very stretchy so I like to use the stretchy ones because they don't create as much bulk and I like to use my scissors if I can find them and cut them in half because I only need little bits of glue dots. I don't need a whole glue dot. So sometimes they stick to your sticker, to your scissors. So I just cut it right in half right where the glue dot is and I need two glue dots to make one bow. So I'm going to, ah, I'm going to cut. This is why I don't like glue dots. I'm going to actually cut these two right off of the roll. makes better sense. So I have my two glue dots cut in half to make four. And now I'm just kind of pre-rolling my paper a little bit so that it doesn't make a crease where it bends. And I'm going to, hang on, how I 
trying to decide how best to show this. So I'm going to just peel one of these glue dots off with my fingernail. And I'm going to place it right on the back side of my foldable piece, right in the middle. There. So I have a little glue dot right in the middle of the, of the back side. And now I'm going to bend this just carefully so that it doesn't make a crease. But I want it to land right in the middle like that. And then I'm going to pinch it a little bit to get it to stick. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. Get it to land right beside the other one. Just like that. And then I'm going to pinch it just to get the glue to firm up and hold it in place. So that's the front side. And that's the back side with the little joint for the two of them. So that's the top part of the bow. Now the next thing that we need to do is take our piece of paper that goes in the middle like this. And if we were going to use a ribbon, we would use the ribbon instead. So what I did when I used ribbon, that looks weird because it's a different color of, of yellow, is I just kind of, can you see how I'm doing that? I'm just, I just held it right beside and I cut it the same length. So I could my ribbon around it like that and stick it with a glue dot like that and you see it is quite a bit too long so I trim it. I'll show you how I do that. But I'm going to do it with the paper just to show you guys how it works with the die. So I'm starting by putting the glue dot right over that joint. And then I'm going to take this piece of paper and start it. I'm careful to not start it down here. I don't want it to hang over so you can see it on the other side. So I'm going to be careful to start it where it's not visible. And I'm, again, just using my thumbnail to pinch it. It doesn't matter if there's glue sticking out around the edges of this because we'll cover it all up at the end. And now I'm going to just fold it over, fold it over, and fold it over again. There we go. So I end up with a piece that looks like this on the front and like that on the back. And now I'm going to trim this piece of paper so that you won't see it from the front. So I just make a little fold. a little crease mark and then I make sure that I cut below the crease mark. And then before I glue it I'm just going to make sure that you can't see it from the front. Nope, you can't. And so now I'm going to take the other, so so far I've used two halves of glue dots and now I'm going to take my third half And I'm going to stick that glue dot right here. Hang on, I'm going to zoom in so that my camera can not be as confused. There we go. Fold it over like that. Give it a little pinch. Again, it doesn't matter that you can see those glue blobs because it's the back side and we'll be covering it up in a second anyways. So now you can use it just as it is but I'm going to put these little dangly things on it. Look right. So I have one more quarter, one more half of a glue dot right here so I'm just going to grab that and place it right 
over that same joint where all the other glue dots are. That's why I like using the really thin stretchy kind because it's a lot of glue. It's a lot of layers of glue dots. And then, oops, that was not in frame. And then there we go. Part of the reason that I don't typically like glue dots is that they're flexible, right? So I find that things on my projects don't stay put very well with glue dots, but that's actually a good thing with this kind of a application. So there's my completed bow. It's really cute. I love it. I will give you a couple of tips on making these bows with different fabrics, so with different materials. So when I made the felt one, I just went into my kid's felt supply, craft supplies, and grabbed a sheet of felt. I love this color. And uh, when you run it through with fabric or with felt, um, because it's such a thin dye, what I did was I when I first ran it through with fabric it didn't cut properly you'll see it's got little like the shape is there but it didn't cut all the way through so what you need to do when you run it through with fabric is you need to add a shim so for me I just took I just have this piece of of um, cardstock that I use for shims I've just got it doubled up and it's when you double up an eight and a half by eleven is the perfect size and so I just keep this with my with my big shot to use as a shim and what you do is you run it through and it's harder to run through with that shim and then I ran it backwards again without taking it out so it didn't shift at all and then that cut through all the way. So there's a couple of little places that it didn't detach this time around. So just make sure that you take a super sharp pair of scissors and cut those off because if you tear them then the shape will fray. So you want to cut them with sharp scissors instead of pulling them apart. And the same thing with the felt. The felt will get really yucky looking on the edges if you tear it out of the shapes. You just want to remove it carefully with scissors if it didn't come apart all the way. So that's how I did the fabric one which turned out like this. And I just used a piece of that ribbon for the center of it. And I did the exact same thing for the felt one. I just ran it through twice with the shim. Um, I just ran it through twice with the shim. So, while I'm making bows, I decided that I would like to try to make um, the little fabric bows. Because they're cute too. Let me see if I can show you an example of a store-bought one. So, what I've been making so far is really similar to these Maggie Holmes bows that you can get. So, the Maggie Holmes ones are bigger. They're wider. They're super cute too. and they don't have the little tails on them. And then the other kind of bows that I've been using and loving are these ones. They're from Studio Calico. And you can tell by looking at them that they're just a piece of ribbon with another piece of ribbon around it. So I wanted to make some of these and I did. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. This is the final product. Isn't it cute? So I'll show you how I made it. What I did, I don't need my Big Shot for this. I chose a piece of wide ribbon. This ribbon is more than a half an inch. It's probably three quarters of an inch. Uh, wide and then a, an accent ribbon that's more narrow this is I don't know three I don't know 
3 eighths inch. So there. 3 eighths, and this one is 3 quarters. 5 eighths. So this one is 3 eighths, and this one is 5 eighths. And I cut a piece of ribbon that is three and a half inches wide, like so. And then I cut a piece of the thinner ribbon that is quite a bit less. That's probably way more than I need it to be. That's actually a lot more than I need it to be. It could be half, I think. Okay. And then we'll trim it down when we're done. So I have my wider ribbon, this one is 5 eighths of an inch, and I have it cut to 3 and a half inches length, and I am just going to line it up so that this center line on my grid mat is in the center. And I know that it's in the center when there's the same number of squares, and it ends in a half, right there. It's actually a quarter. So there it is, centered very nicely. And now for this one, I'm going to take some more of those glue dots. So I'm going to cut a couple of them off my strip. I have three here, which is good. So now I want to put one glue dot that's just a little bit off the halfway mark over to the right, and then another glue dot that's just a little bit off the halfway mark over to the left. They're a little bit further apart than they need to be, but that's okay. So now I'm going to fold this in so that it lines up with my midway point, like that. And then I'm going to fold this one up so that it lines up with my halfway mark like that. And then I have this piece that looks like that. And as I mentioned, those glue dots could have been closer together. There would be this, the bow would kind of stand out more if the glue was over further. But that's okay. Then I like for my bows to have that little indent in the middle of them. So I take another glue dot and I just place it so that it's right smack dab in the middle on the front. Just like that. And now I'm going to bend the fabric of my ribbon so that it sticks to itself in the middle. Just like that. So see that? I'm just pinching it and it looks like that on the back. So you just kind of pinch it like that. There we go. So now I'm going to take another glue dot and I'm putting it on the end of my coordinating center fabric or ribbon and I'm just attaching it to the back side and then I'm going to stretch it all the way around like that so that it'll look like that when it's done and I can shift it over so that it's centered at this point and what I want to do is cut it so that it's the right length that you're not going to see that all that extra if I pull it tight oops there we go so now I'm going to take one last glue dot and I want to place it exactly so I'm going to pick it up and put it on the back side and I put it so that it overlaps with both the ribbon and onto the other ribbon and now making sure that I still have that little pucker in the front that I want I'm going to stretch this 
and try to not get it stuck to my own fingernails and attach it to itself like that. And there you go. I can trim off the little scraggly fray, frayed places like that and then attach a little pop dot. Those are probably too big. I'll put a little half a pop dot on there. And that pop dot will also help to keep the ribbon stuck down where I want it to go. And there, now I have my own little ribbon bow as well. And it's ready to go. It's got adhesive on it already. So I will bring over all the other bows that I've made with my handy dandy die, and as well as the couple of ribbon bows that I've made. So, there we go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, the die that I've been using today is the Studio Calico Craft Die Bow is what it's called. It comes in a package that looks like this. It was stuck on right there. But there are other companies that make these dies as well. As I mentioned, and since I've been making this video, somebody actually commented on my Facebook that Tim Holtz is making Tim Holtz is making a die like this as well. So thanks so much for watching everybody. Have a really great scrappy week.